It was fireworks on the balcony, welcoming in 2017. Sparkles and bangs and all that jazz, delighted squeals and screams. But here we are, right at the end, and it's come and gone just like that. Another year gone, over, ended. Another 365 days completed, just like that. Another year of memories, because really, that's all that we're left with. Broken hearts, healing hearts, joy, horror, sadness. Healing hearts, broken hearts, memories are all there is. 2017 was the year that a man who is a sexist, a racist, a bigot, a billionaire filled with hate, somehow became the president of the American United States. And history is repeating itself all over again, with one group of people singled out to be worse than all of the rest. But the inauguration of Donald Trump, a man hell-bent on dividing nations, led to the largest worldwide protests in recent history, uniting people the world over and showing that hate cannot and will not be allowed to be stationed. The world was shocked when North Korea tested its missile, but in the world that we live in, nothing really shocks me anymore. And the next month, Brexit negotiations began. And the next month, the US dropped the world's largest nuclear weapon down upon Afghanistan. The month of May saw a relentless Jeremy Corbyn petition and campaign like no other. And just as he was doing so well, bang! New stories hit the headlines that my hometown had been hit by a terrorist attack at a concert full of children. What kind of a person stoops as low as that? And we were still reeling, all of us reeling, the pain cutting so deep. And then like salt in the wound, another joke of a woman went on to become Prime Minister. And I heard the hope that came from Corbyn wet its eyes and weep. And while all of this was happening, 20 million were starving on the streets of Yemen, Somalia, South Sudan, Nigeria. They were starving while unicorn food became a thing. Starbucks charging $5 for a multicolored frappuccino just so you could Instagram that shit. 2017 was the year that Great Britain showed just how great it really is. As if murdering abroad wasn't enough, they allowed a tower block full of minorities to burn into an inferno with hundreds of residents trapped within. A monster called austerity reared its ugly head while gentrification shouted out that these people deserved to be dead my heart literally shattered and six months later I'm still trying to understand why how something like this could happen in the 21st century with people with everyone seemingly just letting it slide first world countries third world countries it's the same old shit all around the globe 2017 was the year that the impossible plight of the Rohingya finally began to be shown a textbook example of ethnic cleansing, said the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights. But still there are desperate people taking extreme measures, battling oceans and egos in the hope of reaching a better life. And when they battle all of that and risk their lives just to arrive on new shores, we treat them like scum, we see them as vermin. Our hearts just as closed as our doors. Nice to see you, to see you, nice. 2017 was the year that Bruce Forsyth died, not forgetting the legendary Ompere and the brilliant Louise Hay who have now moved on to their next journey in a beautiful, brighter place. And karma has a funny way of coming back around. Hurricane Harvey hit the most costly natural disaster around. We need to take care of the earth which gives us everything that we need no questions asked, she just gives and she gives and we continue cutting her until she bleeds. Then there was Hurricane Irma and Hurricane Maria too and the deadly earthquake that hit central Mexico killing 369, displacing thousands of others too. It's no surprise that she's screaming out, screaming to be saved. But what will it take for us to realise that she is the reason that we simply survive each day? 
and when October came around, the USA once again showed the world the extent of its problem with guns. When a broken man let his killing weapons loose down on Las Vegas, leaving the entire globe stunned. Yet that is not terrorism, because a shooter was a white man, and white man can't be a terrorist. No, never that. The Las Vegas shooting, injured, 546, 58 dead. But brave Jonathan Smith saved 30 lives before being shot in the neck. 2017 was another year where the Muslims believing in peace had to continue to justify themselves to appease the egos of everyone else and beg them to believe that we are just like everyone else. No, no, not in my name. I believe in peace. It's funny because this monster they call ISIS murders more Muslims than it murders anyone else. And the mosque attack in Sinai killed 350 worshippers in their place of worship. How does that even make sense? 512 dead in Somalia's truck bombing, but those people were Muslim. And even worse, those people were black. And the two coupled together results in hardly any news coverage for that. And if things weren't bad enough already, Trump's Christmas present to the world was to declare Jerusalem as Israel's capital. No wonder so many people are hurt. So as you can see and as you've heard, 2017 wasn't the greatest year. But it really wasn't all that bad either. Chance the Rapper won three Grammy Awards paving the way for independent artists to follow suit. Southwest Airplane saved a plane full of puppies from a hurricane set to destroy them too. A woman donated the food from her cancelled wedding to feed the people living on the streets and a retired Brian Burkett made 50 tubs of curry and delivered them to the homeless every single week. There was a news reporter whose kids burst into the room when he was live on TV and let's not forget the defiance of Safia Khan in the face of racist bigotry. Harry got engaged to a woman who breaks royal stereotypical norms and 2017 was the year that finally Loki's second fire in the booth was born. So as the sun comes down on another year, let us not forget that life comes with its ups and downs, its smiles and frowns, its light and its darkness, its joy and its sadness. Life is a yin yang and if we did not know one extreme then we could never know the other. And whatever happens in our world is a product of us and our thoughts and views of one another. The state of humanity in its beauty and its grace, the state of humanity when it rears its ugly face, it's all down to us, each and every one of us. We have the power to change the world and make 2018 the best year yet. So let us come together love one another, want for our brother what we want for ourselves, leave the hate behind, put it on the shelf, walk hand in hand towards a brand new day, so that at the end of next year, we can all come together and say, 2018 was beautiful. It really, really was.